in the tradition of Malcolm X. Peace be unto you. Ukraine is a dying nation. But before I go into the reasons for my conclusion, let me tell you what I'm not. I'm not a military expert. I have absolutely no military training whatsoever. I'm an observer of military actions that have been taken by my nation, the United States, since the Korean War. I am not going to base what I'm about to say on military expertise. There are many people that are giving us the raw, on the ground data. I'm not going to name them. I'm sure many of you know who they are. And I'm not going to compete with the data that they have about military operations on the ground in Ukraine. That's not the reason <clears throat> for this short talk. But this is what I do know. This is what I am expert at. <clears throat> I can do the math. And with the reliable data that I can access, I can tell you where this conflict is headed. Because everyone knows it's escalating. And everyone knows the source of the escalation. It's NATO, N-A-T-O, NATO, the same NATO that destroyed the nation of Libya. <clears throat> Excuse me. A nation that is still dysfunctional today. A nation whose gold reserves are missing and no one has provided an answer for its whereabouts and when it will be returned to the people of Libya. We know the chaos that is existing in Libya today. No, I'm not a military expert. I'm an observer. But statistically, let me say this. The fertility rate of Ukraine as of 2020 is 1.2 babies per Ukrainian woman aged 15 to 45. That's a negative growth rate, close to, if not the lowest in Europe, maybe lower than the fertility rate of Japan, which was the world's lowest fertility rate for years and years and years. What that means is that Ukrainians, the people that live in Ukraine, are not reproducing enough offspring to even maintain their current population. I also know this. Over 500,000 Ukrainians have fled Ukraine. They are refugees in various European countries. And most of them do not want to ever return to Ukraine again. And that is a reasonable assumption because Ukraine is a mess. It's a hot mess because there's a hot war taking place in Ukraine between Russia and NATO. Not Russia necessarily and Ukraine. The Ukrainians, for some reason, known only to the elite in Ukraine, who have allowed themselves to be the mercenaries of NATO, only they know why they continue this bloodbath, which they cannot win even with increased support from NATO. Why? 
Well, recently, the United Kingdom, Great Britain, England, whatever you want to call it, has said that they're going to give depleted uranium shells to Ukraine. Those are shells that can penetrate metals, hard metals used on tanks to shield tanks. But there's a very, very negative collateral damage when they are used, and that is that the radioactive material that people are exposed to causes cancer. That has been proven to be the case in Iraq where they were used unnecessarily. And many Iraqi children, thousands of Iraqi children have been born deformed. The United States also has said that they're going to send depleted uranium shells for the Ukrainians to use. And this is where we have to stop and, and, and realize this. If a single Ukrainian, I'm sorry, if a single Ukrainian depleted uranium shell is fired onto Russian soil, contaminating it, I think, I think Russia will nuke Ukraine. So as bad as it is for their population growth now, it will spiral to zero and there won't be a nation of Ukraine. I cannot fathom as a reasonable person why the so-called people leading Ukraine down that path can continue to allow their people to be slaughtered. I cannot fathom the emptiness of their soul, the utter emptiness of their souls. I'm not talking about their rational minds. They can plan and manipulate. They obviously are doing that. I'm talking about their soul, the emptiness, the depravity of their soul to allow this to continue to happen to their people. To achieve goals that are going to further the exploitation of their nation. Because that's what is going to happen. The whole point of this is to control resources, including ports and not just mineral resources, but shipping trade routes and so forth. I mean, after all, if you study history, you should know the, the goal of war, aside from national self-defense. Nations that go on the offense are doing it for a reason, to take other people's stuff. That's it. It's really a simple point here. They want it for booty, B-O-O-T-Y, you know, pirate booty. That's why they go to war. That's what empires do to grow. They consume all other groups around them. Now, the United States, the nation in which I live, has spent over $100 billion, over $100 billion, and probably a lot of salt money, to facilitate mercenaries fighting Russia in Ukraine. I don't need to go into detail. I don't need to give you a list of all the things that need to be done in this nation that is spiraling down out of control from Congress to the local supermarket where prices have gone above what many people senior citizens, et cetera, are able to pay for. The cost of living has become too costly for a third of Americans. And our infrastructure, 
in many cities is in dire need of rehabilitation. <clears throat> the fact is the United States is in slow motion decline. I say slow motion because it could be a lot faster than it is. And it's going to be a painful decline. So there is no real justification for our nation spending $100 billion to pay mercenaries, most of whom are corrupt, and we'll never know where that money and where those weapons actually wind up. There's no reason whatsoever for that amount of expenditure, except, of course, to enrich the military-industrial complex. Because no sane leadership would do that to the people they are supposed to be representing, the citizens of the United States. This is not a one-way analysis. This is an objective analysis. This is not I'm on this side or that on, or that I'm on the other side. This is, well, what is in the best interest of all persons here? We are getting closer to nuclear war, believe me. The first depleted uranium shell that strikes Russian territory is going to cause a disaster in Ukraine. Ukraine will cease to exist in Europe. You could just delete the name Ukraine. It's just going to be a total warfare zone. And Russia, if they are attacked that way, there will, there will be a horrible response. Now, the Russian fertility rate is low, too. They're at 1.4. Russia never recovered from the 27 million Russian citizens lost during World War II. You don't just reboot overnight when you lose that number of people in a short period of time due to the invasion of Russia by and Eastern Europe by Nazi Germany. That would be analogous to if you live in California waking up and there's nobody in the state of California remaining but you. Think about that. Think about waking up in the morning and every Californian from Eureka to San Diego is gone and you're the only one driving down the highway. That should help you to understand the population shock to Russia because of the Nazi German invasion. So we're talking about a whole nation being wiped out. And for what purpose? It's because our nation, the United States, could not compete anymore effectively, efficiently with Russia and China and other emerging nations, cannot compete. And so what do you do? Well, you start cheating. And whose fault is it that America cannot compete efficiently anymore? American corporations left the United States and took all of the technology and scientific know-how overseas. And yes, it got stolen, and it's going to continue to get stolen. That's not the people's fault. The government allowed that because the government has historically always been in bed with American corporations who have a compass, a moral compass that points in one direction at all times, and that is self-interest. Not the interest of the nation, not the interest of little me and you. That's the interest of their desire for more gain. That's the greed interest. So whose fault is it that these nations have super weapons now and are out competing the United States economically? It's because America has been cheating through the International Monetary Fund, through the World Bank, and you see that happening now, revolt in Africa, 
And so because we understand the methodology since Woodrow Wilson, we should expect for things to get really, really nasty. I am Dr. Stephen Noor Ahmed. Peace be unto you.